Thank you so much for joining us. This is session number 11, 12, maybe, maybe. 12. Hey. Um, we're having a lot of fun. And I, you know, big thanks to all of you who show up every day, every session. It means so much to us. And we'd also like to uh, welcome new people like Monorom and, you know, um, all of you who have come here for the first time. Uh, it means a lot. Thank you. Um, this is who we are. I'm Alan and this is Rishad. Uh, you like my beard? <laughs> and Shirley, our producer, is behind this camera that we're looking at you uh, on. This is her, her creation, this fine roller disco backdrop uh, that is getting a lot of comment. Please comment. Be rude about it. Be cheeky about it on social media. We, uh, we encourage this um, in every form. And we should auction it off as soon as this is all done. Good idea. Uh, it'll, it'll pay for the transformation of Asian uh, media. <laughs> uh, so guys, this is our mission here at, at Splice. We want, to try, we want to drive radical change by supporting what media startups are doing all across the region. And for us, Splice Beta is where it all happens. This is where we bring together the community uh, to celebrate the amazing work that, that folks like, uh, like Alex are, are doing. We're very proud that we uh, we've been we've been repurposing these numbers uh, as we go along. We realized we didn't have forty plus sessions; we have thirty nine plus sessions. But we're very proud that our numbers went up from a fifty fifty gender balance to a fifty two percent in favor of female speakers. We're we're severely allergic to manners, and we think you should be too. Um, if you're wondering what stacks are, um, all you have to do is go to splicebeta.com/stacks. And you'll find out that all it really means is that you can later, um, you know, choose to choose to consume beta, watch beta, or listen to beta. By you know, Mondays means business and strategy. Tuesdays products. Wednesdays audiences and users and customers. Thursdays is management, operations, and workflows. And Fridays are always media careers. Um, SpliceBeta.com/program is where you go to get an comprehensive list of all the speakers and sessions. And as always, we want to thank our sponsors who've made this happen. Facebook, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung. <laughs> keep saying this wrong. Conrad Adenauer Stiftung. <laughs> <laughs> Google Luminate, NBIF, AFP, Foyo, IMS, our technical partners, Click to View, and Puma Podcasts. And we're so grateful for, you know, we feel that we should shout these people out as sponsors or, or with the sponsors. Uh, it means a great deal to us that some of you brought extra tickets just so that other people could come to beta. This is why we do what we do. This is why this community means so much to us. Thank you so much. The ground rules are very simple. For those of you who've already seen this, uh, make sure you're using the Splice Beta hashtag uh, when, when tweeting us on social media just so that more people can see it. Uh, there's a Telegram group uh, that, um, that Shirley will drop into the, into the chat box. Uh, use that as a way to stay in touch. Um, uh, if you are speaking, use headphones and microphones. Leave your comments, questions, links in the chat box. Also use it to introduce yourselves because this is, after all, your community. Uh, put yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Uh, all of this stuff will be available on, you, on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Uh, also, uh, porn bombing happens, uh, you know, so be it. <laughs> and uh, be kind, be generous. Uh, we're all trying to figure out how media shapes up over the next few years. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to have this awesome session. Um, Tessa Piper and Gabriel Sugar Hetty. Uh, she goes by the short form Hetty. Uh, Pat Bird is clapping her hands there. Uh, both excellent uh, um, uh, speakers who have a very strong view on where media is today and where it needs to go. Uh, their session is about how a lack of business expertise is going to is going to restrict uh, the impact that independent media out here can do. So I think that's really important. Make sure you tune in for that one tomorrow uh, morning, 10, 11 a.m. Singapore time. We have one after that um, coming up at 9 p.m. So tomorrow is going to be a bit of a special day, 11 a.m. Uh, uh, Singapore time and then 9 p.m. Singapore time. Um, thanks to COVID. Um, the the Ken uh, is now a fully remote team, like many of us around the world. Uh, they will come. Um, Rohin, their their awesome CEO, will come and ch uh, chat to us about how they're doing it. Um, and I'm looking forward to him talking through um, how you 
you run a distributed team and a whole bunch of publishing. Uh, look out for that, 9 p.m. Singapore time tomorrow. After this, though, um, in fact, right after this session, we have absolutely zero agenda. Uh, you know, right at the end of the hour, bring your drink. We call it BYOB, which is bring your online beverage. Please drink tea or coffee or water or beer or wine or whatever it is you like to drink at this time of uh, day. Um, we're just, there's no agenda. Just hang out. Let's chat. You know, uh, that's all. That's right. Some people have been, have been suggesting that we spend more time just kind of hanging out and just having a, a casual chat at the end of the sessions. Such so this is one way in which we're going to do that. Also, by the way, it's, uh, it's New Narrative's third birthday today. So we are going to be doing a little shout out to them as well in BYOB. So make sure you stick around for that. That comes up right after this, this session with Wapatoa. And the main act. Uh, how did Wapatoa build this amazing community, this amazing media startup to serve young people in Cambodia? Um, you know, we realized that young people or, you know, addressing the youth is something it is, is in some parts of the media business, a, the holy grail of, of what we're all looking for. Um, I love how these folks do it. Sok Cheng and Alex run Wapatoa uh, from a bunch of different cafes around Phnom Penh um, and uh, from their little office where, where Alex is sitting right now, uh, I believe. Um, we were fortunate enough to meet up with them in Phnom Penh um, thanks to a little project we did last year when we could still travel. Um, and we were absolutely struck by what we found. Um, you know, I love that they address uh, uh, issues straight, straight on. You know, um, I like that, you know, we asked them what they did and um, Alex and Sok Chen were saying, sometimes people, sometimes we're training people to be adults. We're telling people how to be adults. Um, a lot of people are at that interesting stage of life where they're like, how do I open a bank account? How do I, you know, how do I look good on camera? How do I go for a first date? And it's it's wonderful to see that this um, this conversation is happening. Um, Alex, I'm going to stop uh, presenting, and we can see what you look like in real life. Please, all yours. Yeah. OK, I'll just share my screen. How is that? That is coming up, and it's perfect. Very nice. All yours. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Thank you so much, um, Alan and, and Richard, and, and everyone who is in this, um, yeah, in this call. And really grateful for the the talk that happened in the past um, in the past few days, and all the talks that are uh, that are coming. It's really it's really helpful for us at at Vapato and in Cambodia because we we tend to feel a bit um, lonely, you know, in the in the media sector in in Cambodia. So it's it's really great um, to have uh, to have Splice doing this. And yeah, super grateful today to to get the chance to explain a bit our journey and how we survived so far three years um, at, at Vapatoa. So um, yeah, as, as it was briefly introduced, so we are based in Cambodia. We are uh, a media startup working with, uh, with young people. And um, the story of how we started is, is pretty much very much about how my co-founder and I um, met and became friends. So Sok Sheng, who is um, Vapatoa's co-founder, who is Cambodian, and yeah, and me, obviously not Cambodian, I'm very French. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so when we so when we met, you know, student um, Sokcheng was still sorry a, a student, and she was also teaching, translating, working these two jobs, and she she had started blogging for already three or four years. Um, and I came to Cambodia roughly five years ago. Um, to do teachers training for university. I also ended up teaching because this is just how things work in Cambodia. And, um, and, and from, from France and, and previous work experience, I, I was more uh, used to the, the startup world and, and working with, uh, with entrepreneurs. And, and so, yeah, we, we became friends and we, we cared about the same things, you know, and we, we made the same observation. Uh, we, we both had students, uh, we were um, you know, discussing with them, interacting with them on a daily basis, and we, we could we had the same observation about how they were trying to figure things out, uh, where they were accessing information, um, 
the love-hate relationship they had with their phone and with social media. So that's um, really what brought us um, together, what that, this, this observation and that understanding that um, there wasn't much um, going on in terms of, of, of media and, and, and content for, for young people back then. So that, that was in 2000, uh, like late 2017. And this is a, a bunch of pictures for the past um, three years from what we managed to build together uh, at Vapotor. So it's been a lot of you know events that we organize or we join, meeting uh, meeting young people all over the all over the country. And yeah, we are super super grateful to have had these this moment and also all this feedback for, from the community, meaning that um, we, we are building something that like brings um, joy to their life or that is you know helping them and, and being uh, useful. And we really hold hold on these this these pictures and this this moment dearly because when whenever we want to quit, this is the only thing that um, that reminds us. Okay, we, we should keep doing this. This is this is good. This is useful. And um, this is a bit of who who we are in a in a nutshell. So we we consider ourselves as a, a resource and a safe community for young people. And the purpose is really to enable them to be informed, um, gain ideas, and and learn actionable tips um, for their inner self, but also you know um, to to live in in the society they live in, to understand that society, comprehend it and act upon it if, if they feel like it, if they want to. And in terms of target audience, so Cambodia is a fairly small country, right? It's 60 million people. Um, more than half of the population is under 30. So this is a fairly like super young country, actually. Um, but we are not, you know, we're not targeting everyone under 30. Uh, we are focusing on that niche uh, audience, which is roughly 500,000. Um, students and young professional like grade 11, 12 in high school and um, the, the first couple of years of, of university. And today we were happy to have uh, more than 30,000 um, users uh, among these people and, and more than half of them are, are young women. In terms of, uh, in terms of product, oh, someone is, yep, sorry, someone is not on mute. Could I remind everybody, um, let's all mute ourselves while the speaker is uh, speaking. Uh, you'll yes, find the mute button if you hover on your screen and just whack, the, whack your mic uh, and put yourself on mute. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's cool now. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, in terms of, of, of product and service, so we are both online and offline. And we, we started online because it was easier, cheaper also, to be honest. Um, so we have this weekly publication going on with all of these different formats and in terms of vertical so th the focus was really when we started self-development and then we, we branched towards um, culture and travel education and career health and well-being and um, society issues and we work with these similar verticals offline as well so we have a, a printed publication um, uh, we have like a, a small guidebook for students uh, the first edition was 20,000 um, copies and we also do events, like three to four events per month. And we started to do training recently also for young content creators. So that's that's what we build. Uh, super happy, super excited about it. Uh, lots of blood and tears, lots of gratitude. And this is um, 2018. <laughs> um, so this is what we were, who we were, what we what we had in, in 2018. And, we had a small team of Gen Zer, I think is the pronunciation. Um, you know, people born after 1995. Um, you know, people who were not sometimes born during the year 2000 that we all celebrated. That that's how how young they are, uh, our team members, and they still had to graduate. So it was quite challenging because they were studying at the same time when we when we started. We had a cheap website, cheapest website you could find that I, I, I built. Uh, we had a cheap office with cheap carpet, um, cockroaches, but we, we love that place. Um, and on the plus side, you know, that that's, that small team, they, they are, uh, they were and they are because it's still the same people we work with today, um, super bright, super creative, um, hungry, you know. Um, we had one Bitcoin, which was uh, pretty much seed funding. Uh, lucky me, I, I sold it at the, at the right time. 
and yeah, just for the jokes, but we, we had bean bags uh, in our cheap office, and this this kept bringing people in um, because they could hang out and and nap a lot, as you can see in this picture, which is really not not staged. This is real. Um, so the way I'm going to present how how we went on the journey, you know, from 2018 to 2020, it's going to be somehow chronological because I wouldn't feel it would be very honest to say, hey, these are the top 10 things you have to do. This this was the plan, man. This is what we did. Uh, we we had some like fair amount of strategy, of course, and uh, we were going step by step. But half of it was like unplanned. You figure it as you go. Um, lots of A/B testing, lots of luck, lots of failure as well, and you know this 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 world we are evolving in. Like media, it's moving super fast. Technology is moving super fast. Young people, even faster, moving even faster. So it's super hard to make like a a long a long term plan. So really, I'm going to present it the way we figured it out um, to have a bit of, of of structure. It will always revolve around these three three key components. We, we always had these three uh, components in mind, which are people, brand, branding, and product, uh, which I think everyone is uh, yeah, pretty, pretty familiar with. Um, yeah. So this is year one. Um, so our, um, our strategy and how we started building Papatoa, you know, we, we, we had to exist. <laughs> Just pure simple, because we were nothing, right? So we had to exist. Um, we had to be different and we wanted to grow an audience organically and not really care about uh, numbers and, and monetizing. And what success uh, we, we thought would meant for us was can we build a small community of like loyal, super loyal users and, and content creators like on, on both sides. And just to explain a bit the two, the two pictures on the right, um, at the top is Bichika who is a who was one of the, the top fan, first fan of Bapatoa, and he would just pop up regularly in our in our cheap office. Um, and that picture pretty much summarized it, like the, the spirit we had when we thought we are making this for young people is that just come as you are. Uh, he's really into cosplay. He just show up at the office wearing his costume and he can just be there and talk with us. Um, and at the at the bottom, it's, it's the picture of our launch event. So even though we, um, we we were online first when, when we started, we really wanted to have an event with you know people in, in real life, like bring them together, um, get their feedback, really explain what we were trying to build. And there was a bit of strategy, of course, behind it, which is that maybe half of them were like Sokshang's friends, <laughs> and then friends of friends came, and we were like, okay, these are the core loyal users we have to take super good care of when we start because they're going to be you know the ambassadors the early adopters really grateful for these people who who came um and then yeah um i i think one very important thing when you start to to build a product or a service for someone is to really care and to care about what they care about it's it seems pretty simple just like that but evolving in the sector for three years now we we see a lot of a uh, project or a startup that go with what they want to do, you know, fall, fell in love with their product or their service. But are you actually like asking people if this is what they need, if, if this is what they, if this is what they want in their life? You know, are you answering any of their needs? So even even if it's like a life process of you know figuring it out, if, if you remember your twenties, it, it's really as Richard was introducing before. It's it's really a time of your life where you are transitioning to, to adulthood and it's it's pretty challenging and uh, you have all of these things going on you know your relationship your career your work and then there's society norms figuring your sexuality and on top of that you add climate change technology like the, the, this generation these these young people that were born with, with climate change you know with Facebook uh, it's it's impacting their life um, very much they have a lot of things to to figure out and this 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 slide is a bit. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a bit stupid. I wasn't sure if I could I should put it or not. But um, it, it's just to demonstrate that we we really made that that process of trying to understand, empathize, and and relate to what what they are going through when they are trying to figure it out. You know, and and sometimes you feel like you got this, 
the world is going well, you're hopeful, and you're better because you, you are the one building the society of tomorrow, people keep telling you. And, and sometimes you, you feel so lost and you're so, so confused. And, uh, and Earth is dying, all of these depressing stuff. Uh, and then there are a lot of things in between. And, and this is where, this is where Papatoa position uh, itself. We are really this friendly companion, I would say. Um, the, the purpose is really to empower young people to figure it out and to, to lead more fulfilled lives. So it's like, you know, a friend with the warm cup of tea, you celebrate together, you cry together, you doubt together, you question things together. And in terms of well, like a, you know, a product, uh, we share ideas and practical advice down a range of safe channel so that our community members can choose the format that works uh, best for them. And I, I really think this is super important when you're uh, working with any audience. And here I'm talking about young people, like really care, 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 understand them and, and listen. Um, and also understand the world they live in. Uh, because you want to be like, hey, I, I've studied where you're coming from. I, I understand your 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 challenges, your um, conflict, internal conflict. I understand the society pressure, the family pressure. Uh, I understand also the media landscape. And look, I've I've made this for you. Maybe it's gonna help. I, I listen. I, yeah, I think this can help you. Um, this is just a short. Um, short extract, uh, Orphan Generation is, uh, was written by Sok Cheng, so my, my co-founder. Um, it was one of the first articles we, we published on Bapatoa. And I'm just, I'm just going to read a, a small quote to, to give you a bit of um, understanding why I think this piece is important. What can we do then as the new lost orphan generation? I think we can either take the pessimist view by lamenting the difficulty of being born into a post-war country where no one has given us the material with which to build our culture and ourselves. Or we can take the builder spirit from the same ruined rubbles of the past that our parents rebuild the homes, schools, and hospitals. We can start reconstructing our very own culture and ourselves, our hospitals for the minds. Um, I still get goosebumps when I read this, and I, I go back every couple of months to, to read that article. Um, so really, this was to to show, send a message to this, this audience that we understand, uh, we are you, and let's, let's build this together. Uh, let's collaborate. And then there's the media landscape. Um, not quite sure the Cambodian media landscape is, is very different than other countries uh, in the region, but lots of issues you know about. Fake news, clickbait content, uh, content that is not local, translated directly from uh, Vietnam or Thailand. Uh, if you want to read good stuff, it has to be in English. If you don't speak English, well, that's too bad for you. Uh, also, of course, a lot of restrictions, as you're all aware. So we really wanted to, after that benchmark, you know, go the, the other way. Uh, quality content, research-based, um, relatable, bilingual, why is the content in English in a country where the, the first speaking language is Khmer? When you were 19, you were not reading magazine in Spanish or Chinese, right? Or even English, you were reading it in, in, your, in your language. And in terms of, of style, we wanted it to be conversational with um, opinions and fun uh, for it to also feel like a safe, safe place. Um, this is just uh, <laughs> to, to show um, where we position ourselves when we, we launch, we analyze that, that there was that gap. So on the left side, you can see um, these are like more traditional uh, media news outlet. Um, you will notice it, it looks quiet, like it's talking about politics quite a lot, and you will notice it's in English. On the right side, you have uh, other works that are more about entertainment, and they are in Khmer. And you will also notice that they all went for the same design. Maybe they have the same designer. I don't know. They all went for the same design strategy, which is like, it's, um, it's, it's everywhere. It's a, it's a lot of content. And you will also notice that uh, the business model seems to be the same, which is advertisement, banners popping everywhere. To confirm our observations, the connection we had with young people from our network with uh, Sok Chang. We also did a small survey when we started. This is just a small, you know, a small sample. And we asked them, you know, 
what kind of media do you want? What would fit for you? What language? What topics? What format? Are you happy with what is out there? Yes, why? No, why? And this, this really helped to validate our the, the hypothesis, the assumptions um, that we had, uh, which later also really helped to um, raise money or work with partners. So after you know, thinking really hard about the people we were trying to, to, um, to address and to engage with, we work on our product. We had listened, we knew what was missing, and we knew we had to be different if we wanted to, to succeed. So this is our website. Um, it's, it's made for phone. It's just an infinite scroll. There is no navigation. We did lots of uh, user experience testing with students, and they just don't navigate. There is no right, no left. Um, it's a weekly publication, so it's quite a, a slow media. We don't have ads or very little. It's bilingual. Uh, it's like a blog. The, the style um, also is just like a friend talking to you. And we also invested the, the, the little money we had in, uh, in spending time to do uh, illustration and really good design. Because if you remember what I, I showed a few slides uh, earlier, uh, this is not attractive to young people. Uh, really not. <laughs> And so we put our first, you know, product content um, out there, but we were always listening, discussing, and that was often. We we had a series of podcasts which didn't really work in terms of how many people listened to it, but it really worked in terms of hearing the stories of the people we invited. They had different career paths, different educational background. They came from really. Um, all walks of life, and it, it helped us to to understand the, the the topics and what value we could we could bring uh, by paying attention to that. It was called uh, Nieli, which is teach chat in commerce. So it was really super super chill, and we also did that on Facebook. So we had Facebook Live every two weeks for I don't know how many months, many months, and we would just invite young people who had. Um, Cool stories to share or their struggles to just come and sit on the beanbag. Our we are the proud owner of beanbags, so we, we use them for that. And it, it it really I think it really helped also to uh, build a relationship with people because they could interact with us and they felt like they could join the show, they could take part and in the conversation. Um, in terms of uh, design and content, we really tried to uh, be prettier on our based on our own standards you know and to be a bit bold sometimes to be fun so you can see that um crying uterus um at bottom right from one of our, our partner today the slap uh, because you know why not we are talking about periods and we want to have a crying uterus and uh top left um at the bottom uh this is a comic explainer we did recently about mosquito borne disease which is not you know the it's not the sexiest topic. It's not the easiest to 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 sell to young people. But then our team is super creative. Uh, Udom, who is our uh, designer and illustrator, has so many ideas. And he, this is just an example. Of the explainers is a few pages long, but yeah, this is a mosquito having blood at a blood bar. Um, so this this really helped um, to get noticed and also for people to, I think, uh, like us because we we had that different uh, that different tone. In terms of topics, um, you know, it's not easy because we, so we had the topics we want to do. We had the topics we think young people want to know about, and then we work with partners. And everyone is like, um, you know, human rights, environmental activists, LGBTQ rights, young people should stand up for themselves and, you know, talk publicly. But then when we do survey, you know, this is not what they want because they're like, all of us, you know, they care about their family, their health, and money is a big component. So this is just an example, but this is a topic that was totally absent when we when we started, apart from the like success success seminar um, kind of thing that young people don't really go to. I don't know if you can see what I what I mean, but it, it's it's a thing in Cambodia, the success seminar. Um, so yeah, we talk about money um, because. Uh, this is what they asked for, and maybe it's not the most like controversial um, uh, topic, but it's 
it's actually super important for all of these young people. And if you want to build a relationship with them and show them that you care, then you, you give them what they need. So this is a recurring topic. And last about the product, um, I want to emphasize the fact that we, we really made the effort to uh, highlight and promote uh, role models from very different background, different gender, um, different walk of life. Because again, as I said at the beginning, the whole point of Apato is to help you figure it out. And there are many paths that are in front of you and how are you going to choose? So we think by showing diversity and, and all the options and the fact that you can be whoever you decide to be, um, despite all the constraint and the depression that young people experience in the, in the Cambodian society, um, this, this is really the message we, yeah, we want to, to convey because this, this generation is lacking um, role models, you know, artists, writers, um, teachers. So we really need to, to put more role models out there, young role models and, and not so young as well. In terms of, of uh, brands, so really the first year we, we just wanted to exist. We wanted to get noticed. And uh, the way we did it was pretty, um, pretty straightforward. <laughs> so what I call spam if you must. Um, our brand is, we hear you, we care about you. Uh, we want to help you if you want to be helped. And every person who liked or shared content on Vapatoa for the first six months to almost one year, we messaged them back. And we explained them what Vapatoa was. And 20 to 30% of the time, they, they answered back. And I think these people who answer you back, they're going to be a user for quite some time. And they're going to recommend you to their friend. And we also showed our faces everywhere. That was a bit uh, tiring, and Sakshang and I are quite introverts, so it was it was a bit difficult. Um, any student fair, startup pitch, almost we you know we were there. Uh, we also got an award, a Creative Digital Content Award, um, which which really helped uh, with uh, establishing our brand and, and, and show that we could be uh, we could be trusted. And this is what started to happen after one year. I'm not going to read them, uh, but all of these reviews, messages, um, spontaneous, and sometimes we would also ask for them. Uh, people were telling us, this is good. Please keep going. This is helping me. This is fantastic. Uh, Vopatoa is going to be like Wikipedia, the Khmer Wikipedia in the future. When you read that, you know you are like, OK, we keep going. Um, and we we realized also by collecting all of, all of these feedback and through a survey that 30% of our users are recommended by friends. So sometimes we wish this number would be a bit higher because you can see that 60% got to know through Facebook, because Facebook is king in Cambodia for, for now and, and for young people. But still, we, we really grew pretty organically. We didn't give a dollar to Facebook um, our first year. And then, so um, arrived year two. So really, what we were focusing on um, was to take care uh, of the, the twenty thousand uh, users uh, community that we had managed to build in our first year. And we also wanted to acquire new users outside of our organic circle because we like we were lacking confidence a bit in the sense that we were thinking, hmm, but what about these people? Are our friends? Are they our friends' friends? But what about you know, the people who don't know us, uh, do, do they see any, any value in, in Vapatoa? And you can see on the right, it's, it's pretty long, but this is a kind of love letter, and we receive a few um, every couple of weeks or months uh, of, of someone we didn't really, we didn't really know, and we, we touched that person. Um, so that's, that's what success, uh, I think, uh, meant for us at, at that time. And also, <laughs> success was also... Uh, Okay, how do we survive now? We have a community uh, that Bitcoin is long time gone, spend it all. Uh, how how are we going to monetize this? You know. So back to product. Um, the way to keep uh, taking care of our existing community was to keep churning out good content and you know to be to be consistent to to be there. That's really really important when you're trying to build a relationship with someone to be consistent. But then we fell in the, the content trap, uh, which was we, we, we thought we'd, our only way to exist and to, to have um, value for our fans, our users, and also for our partner was to produce a lot of content 
and then we just end up being a bit burnout, out um, especially my my co-founder uh, because we, we took we took a lot of work uh, because we saw this is what we needed to do to survive but we realized afterward and I'll explain it a bit after that it wasn't necessary what is necessary is is quality and, and consistency really regarding the brand so you know we are quite we are quite small. We 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 have like less than twenty five thousand likes or followers on on Facebook. Um, but the question we ask ourselves is: Do do you want a like, or do you want love? <laughs> we want love, and we also want. I, I mean, anyone wants love, right? To give and, and to to receive. It's fairly simple. Uh, we we wanted people to uh, really feel like the the relationship we have with them is important. So getting personal is is really helping with that. So our team, and especially um, Udom and Sokrain, came up with these this comics, which are genius. Uh, it's this purple blob and uh, a Kumaya monkey. And it's, it's pretty wholesome, sometimes a bit sarcastic. And we've been publishing this for a year and a half, consistently, every two weeks. Uh, and, and people can relate to them. Uh, it, it triggers emotions. Uh, triggers connections and also it's it's snackable content so you, you can acquire new users by just sharing um, this content it's it's easy to consume right and at some point this was a strength and also a, a struggle our our admin on Facebook so Sheng, uh, really helped uh, define our brand and maintain the relationship with the users to the point that she was receiving lots of messages, private messages, questions, questions sometimes she didn't know how to answer or maybe she didn't want to answer and it was just too much. Um, so the fact that she was not a bot, because let's be honest, nobody, apart from ordering food, we don't like to talk to bots when we have problems or questions. Um, it, it really helped build a brand because she became the face of the company. Um, but then at, at some point it, it became a bit too much for her uh, it was just a lot of solicitation, a lot of questions, uh, a lot of expectations from people. So we came with ideas to include her in the comic, have a 2D version of herself. Uh, you know, she started to vlog, then she decided to stop. Uh, so yeah, finding that, that right balance, and it's, it's, uh, it's something that a lot of media influencers are doing, you know, they, they are, the media is, is just themselves, right? And this is not where we wanted to go because we want to be a collaborative place for different people to share ideas and tips. Um, so we didn't want it to rely only on one person. So this is a bit tricky. It was both yeah, a strength and a, a challenge. As I said, we were lacking some a bit of confidence and we were not sure um, if only our friends uh, loved Baba Toa and, and, and were reading the articles and watching the videos. So. Uh, we did a bit of street marketing uh, because it's quite uh, cheap uh, because we think it's efficient when you're trying to build like develop a small uh, small audience and also because we we tried to give a bit of money you know to, to Facebook but it, it didn't work out it didn't work very much like you get a few you get a few users but um, we I don't know for us it didn't really work if if you go to an event, you know, you give a talk, you give a t-shirts. We also have these really cool stickers with our mascots. We distributed thousands of them. We sent boxes and parcels of stickers to students in the province to distribute in their school. And we would send a hundred. And after three days, they were like, can I have 300? They're all gone. So that was really an, a good way to, to grow. And we also did monthly giveaways. So giving, you know, books from young, art, uh, young writers, artwork from young artists um, this this helped to acquire new people and also to uh, uh, yeah expand the, the network of people we could partner with because all of these artists writers had friends and connections and it just all come together and help to grow our team uh, another uh, component of street marketing is the, the guidebook that we uh, we did so it's a hundred pages small guidebook for students uh, there was nothing like that that existed in Cambodia or that was distributed in, in, in Phnom Penh or other cities. Um, so we distributed in every, like every cool coffee shops where students hang out. Uh, we went to universities to give talks. We went to book fairs. Uh, the, the book was free. 
and it, it, it really really helped uh, with with marketing and it also actually really helped to to find partners afterwards because they were like oh you are the, the guys who did that guidebook uh, we'd like to do something similar or we think this is great can we work together um, coming back to to people and uh, young people um, our second year because we had a bit more money we were able to hire them even though we were uh, a bit ashamed and it was really hard sometimes because the salaries were so low but uh, we didn't pay them very well but we, we took them seriously and I think this is uh, very important when you are building something for young people you want young people to be around the table and, and speaking out um, and also just as a joke but they, they know what is going on on Facebook and yeah most of us like I don't know we don't <laughs> um, so you can see that, that the pictures on the right it's an event called Barkem in Cambodia which is pretty a pretty big event and everyone went to talk the intern uh, the part-time staff the full-time staff the co-founder we didn't really care, you know, one of them was 19 years old, none of them almost had graduated, they maybe didn't even have a first job yet, but they were part of our team and we valued them and we, 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 we asked them to be out there to both represent Vapatoa and also to connect with young people. And this really, um, I think this really helped to, to connect and Bar Camp is an event that goes around universities in Cambodia. Oh, someone is not on mute again. Okay, um, and uh, so yeah, going around uh, universities with these this talks and our whole team really, really helped. And the, the drawing at the bottom is, uh, is part of an illustrated story that the team made. Um, it, it's the same, you know, we, we, we trusted them and they got paid to cover an, an art event and to write about it, what they felt about it and to draw about it. And the story uh, got pretty got pr pretty big and other people asked us to do similar format uh, later so really involving them uh, even though it can be difficult sometimes because they are lacking experience there's this gap difference in the way we work um, you, you need you need young people if you if you want to do product and service for young people <laughs> can't say that enough this is a bit outside the topic, but I'll just take a minute to mention it because I think it's important. This user community and the fact that we really put all, all of our efforts to create interaction with young people is what allowed us to monetize. Um, the content doesn't allow us to monetize. The community um, allows us to monetize. And uh, you can see on the right all of these different partners we've worked with. They want to connect with young people, to interact with them, to understand them. And they come through us, to us, sorry, because they know that we can be that, that in between, right? So this is really where our value, um, our value is for, for monetization, because we are not in a market where we can ask for a subscription or membership yet. So we finance ourselves with three main uh, income streams, uh, grants, sponsored content, and we have a creative agency on the side where we work for NGOs and uh, companies who have CSR uh, programs, like educational programs. And this is <laughs> just for the joke. Uh, when we we made it rain, uh, the, the the first this is one of the first projects we we signed. And I, I really want to emphasize this again because um, we we meet with. Um, a lot of you know partners and, and companies and clients are, are what allow you to become a sustainable uh, media, right? A sustainable business, because we are not subscription or membership based. So when they tell us they want to work with and for young people, we always pushing for okay, but why are they not sitting around the table? So many of these events, so many of these roundtable, these panels, manuals, it's like just young people are not there, and I think they should. And I think they should be hired no matter, you know, their age, their degree. We don't care about degrees at Vapatoa. Uh, nobody, one person has a journalism degree. Uh, we don't really care. I don't know if this is a mistake or not, but we don't really care because we, we think anyone can learn anything and especially at, at this age. So hire them, you know, intern, apprenticeship, whatever you can do, hire them. <laughs> and this is the last, um, the last year. So this is uh, 2020 and what we are 
what doing is a product upgrade. So we are trying to do less, but to do to do better. So in terms of success, you know, it, it means can we strengthen our relationship with the audience? Uh, can the audience engagement be, you know, more meaningful, um, deeper? We are, we are not looking for the million like for a three second uh, watch video on Facebook, right? And we are also scaling. Um, and the way we do that is through a, a decentralized um, process. So we are building this network that we call the Media Collective for now until we get a better name. And yeah, we hope it's going to be a, we hope it's going to be a, a success. So regarding the product upgrade, so after two years, uh, we sent this really long survey to more than 100 of our fans, and it was really long, very detailed. So we are really happy that we managed to to get all of these answers. Uh, we asked things about their demographics, their lives, and also their digital habit and the, the relationship they, they have with Vopitor. And um, it, it validated a lot of hypotheses we, we had um, about, OK, where are we taking up to our next? But there were also a few findings that um, yeah we were quite uh, surprised about. And I could share the survey to, to some of you if you are interested um, at some point. And one of the findings, for instance, was that the, the format that we were doing, you know, they were asking for a more visual um, uh, format, less text, not very surprising. Uh, they were asking for videos as well. And then we want to, you know, apply our, like, Papatoa style on it, and we don't want to do vlog like everyone else. Um, so we want to do animated videos, for instance. Uh, same for the visual explainers. Super trendy on Facebook in Cambodia is this, these posters with these quotes. They're everywhere. And what we do is, is a bit more in depth. Uh, it's, it's a longer format, and it's the one like the mosquito I explained at, at the beginning. And these are super, super, um, super successful. So we're going to focus on making more of these. In terms of what we do offline, so we we, we wanted to move offline uh, to build more meaningful relationship and maybe be able to monetize meetups and events and support groups in the future. And we asked the users, do you want that? And they said, yes. So we are going to try that. Um, I don't know if my pyramid makes sense, but um, I, I didn't follow a specific model. I'm sure there is one of these models. Um, but basically, you know, at, at the beginning, we were really looking into sharing information, having them become aware of some topics, issues, sharing about it. Then there's the second layer where you you start to care, um, think critically, you feel, uh, you you argue, you comment, and then there's a third on the top of the pyramid, which is about your behavior. Uh, after what you've read, after what you watch, after an event you've joined, are you going to maybe change something in your behavior? Are you going to maybe recommend something to someone, influence people around you? And that's that's where we want to uh, tap in. And um, it, it's pretty much what Splice is doing. You know, it, It's just easier to do it with other people when you want to learn. Uh, some people want to be by themselves, and some people rather learn with a community. So this is what we are um, working towards. And to, to finish, so to explain how, how we are growing, uh, like how we are uh, both growing uh, the, the company like structurally, but also how we are um, building this this small niche audience with with communities. We are uh, launching this media collective, which is pretty much a network of trusted um, youth group influencers, artists, media startups. We don't really care about the label. Maybe it's a mistake, and we will learn from that. But for now, it's it's fairly open. We have a set of criteria, and and none of them is about who you are or what you are. It's really about what you want to achieve. Um, and the purpose of this collective is to reach already built niche audiences by teaming up with other like-minded communities. And if we team up together uh, like that, we will be able to outsource the launch of uh, specialized verticals without bearing all the costs at, at Vapatoa, you know? And uh, by teaming up together, we can share distribution platforms. I think the the visual at the top right explained that pretty well. You know, this is how social media uh, work. Uh, this is how content spread. And this is also how young people want to work. They don't want a nine to five um, job at the office with a boss. We, we tried, it's really difficult. <laughs> and um, 
And lastly, as, as part of this, this collective, to grow from the inside as well, we want to train content creators. And you can see the picture on the right. It's our first uh, training with a young eco ambassador. They are uh, young or potential like environmental activists, and, and we are training them um, yeah, since last month. Just to show that behind all of these fancy words, uh, decentralized network, networkization, uh, they are actually yeah, real, real people. And these are um, the people who agreed to pilot the media collective with us. Uh, most of them uh, were member of a, a program we, um, we, we joined with UNDP and Splice uh, in Cambodia. And uh, yeah, we are super grateful they, they agreed to go on this adventure with us and they are helping us to, to scale actually. And this is the last slide, which is not uh, not the prettiest, but this is where we are at today. So really uh, putting all of our efforts to uh, support each uh, each community to build their uh, their niche audience, their, the relationship with the people they know, with the people they care about, with the people they understand. So everyone stays independent, can do whatever they want to do, you know, content, meetup, events, trainings. Um, but then there's this more horizontal organization uh, that comes across and that, that helps with, you know, producing content together, doing fundraising together, business development together. Uh, we, we realize when we, we pilot the media collective that we are all, you know, applying for the same pocket of money, going after the same client, um, struggling with our processes, with impact measurement, financial management. So just creating this kind of like production house, creative production house, I don't know how it's going to be called yet, we really help to, to to work on all of these components together and also I think allows to save um, costs considerably. So this is also an yeah, important point. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for me. I'm going to stop sharing. Wow. I'll just leave it like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hit stop sharing, that okay. would allow all of us to get. Oh yes, much better view of everything. Uh, Alex, this is really quite amazing. I remember our first conversation. Remember in that in that little cafe that was a bit too loud for for all of us. But I remember how when we first started talking about Wapato, and this was what two years ago then, right? It was about yeah. two years. Yeah, yeah, you were explaining, you know, and it was like this and like this and like this, and then boom, here we are right now in 2020 and it feels like you figured out how all these pieces come together but i think yeah. most importantly you have a view of your of your audience you know exactly whom you're serving and you know exactly what they need from you and you're going out and building that for them and you I know what i wonderful. love absolutely you know what i love is that i remember you know we were so struck um back then by what you were telling us and i remember you know her her co-founder sakcheng was off in a corner Kind of saying, I, have to work. A, uh, a blog. I need to work, guys. You know, to you. <laughs> I don't have time to. I you don't That's have time right. to you guys. Exactly. You know, whatever. Sounds whatever. Sounds like I don't her. know what you do. <laughs> and no, it was awesome. I like, I like the, you know, back to business approach. And, but I remember, you know, being like, we were so amazed by the fact that you had this amazing community and you were telling us all these stories about th this community. And, and we looked at each other and said, you know, you should think of doing uh, events. And you were like, are you crazy event that takes a lot of and i said but you have this amazing community you're it it sounds like you could just you know ask them to turn up at a at a coffee shop and yeah, they could yeah and now they do and now you're doing all of this stuff um you know yeah, yeah i think yeah. it's also like like the way you describe the gap in the market where where you see the media landscape in cambodia and where you guys can play you know mm. which i think is remarkable i think when when we were there you know our as part of this audit that, that we did with uh with undp uh it was very clear that there was huge discrepancy between like mass media that were very newspaper based and then there were a whole bunch of smaller groups of uh influencers and youtubers and, and all that uh, bloggers, you know, in the case of, of Sok Cheng. Um, and we thought this is a tremendous opportunity here to galvanize a community. Uh, That's right. And, you know, look where we are now. And, and you know, congratulations. I think this is wonderful. Yay, thank you. Yeah, we are still alive and uh, we are recruiting. <laughs>
Hey, surviving is great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's let's get to some of the questions here. Uh, Neha Gupta is asking, do you have in-house animators or work with external animators? Very specific question. Yeah, uh, that's that's quite tricky. So we've tried both. Um, um, the, the tricky part is that these people are really, really expensive. <laughs> a minute is like a thousand dollar and then it, it's expensive anywhere and it's expensive in Cambodia. So we kind of give up on the in-house part for now because we, we realize by you know working with um, young people or people who want to still be freelancing, it's, it's just hard to have them in-house. Uh, they don't want an office anyways. So you know why, why, why bother? Um, so yeah, I think we just learn to work in a more uh, decentralized way, but then we still have, I would say, like a creative lead that is part of our team and is making sure that even though we work with different people from um, like different places, uh, it, there's still a consistency in yeah in our style and um, in our, our voice, I would say, yeah. Alex, um, we have an awesome question from Florence as usual. Um, she's asking, you mentioned um, two distinct groups, loyal users and content creators. How do you nourish this loyalty and how do you continuously incentivize these two groups? How do we nourish? Um... Nourish the loyalty and incentivize the two groups. Um, I think to, to nourish it is, uh, is really about being present, uh, being consistent, um, and and being there when people expect you to to be there. So there are a lot of events, and people always tell us like, "Oh, Vapatua wasn't there. Vapatua didn't join." Uh, so I think it's like by being part of the life they are living, uh, to to show that we yeah we are in the same world than, than them. Um, for the so this is for I think for for loyalty and then that's why we are also moving towards events you know uh, to to be more uh, present and uh, connect more with the, the core fan and then for the content creators I would say decide somehow is uh, it's, it's quite similar you have to be you have to be present you have to be consistent because there are a lot of so very often they give you 5k and then it's over and you do a one social media campaign and then it's over because that's that's following the agenda of that specific donor. So what we are trying to do here with the collective is to have this, this pocket of money and this this set of like trainings for them to do this, you know, long term and to give it a try. Like, is this going to become a business? Is this going to is this going to grow or not? So I would say giving a chance a bit on the long term to content creators because getting paid for making one piece or or my favorite like can you do a free free video free logo for us stop doing that to young people this has to stop like it's not helping them and it's not helping you neither um not not angry right. here but just like I, I think it's important to think about a long-term relationship because this is what most of us are looking for um so yeah i, I think really really think about the the where you want to go with this this young people and not, not just saying like this is a one shot project How is that creative person going to keep going, you know, always hunting for the, the next project of someone else? Let them do their own stuff and support them do their own stuff. I think, uh, you know, let's not do this to old people either, by the way, guys. <laughs> Pay your old people too. Pay your old people too. Um, <laughs> People are humans too. Uh, hey, uh, one quick question from, from our friend Dorothy. Uh, what was your strategy in trying to reach your audience for the podcast? Oh, uh, no strategy. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, That's very honest. That's good. Uh, at that point, yeah. Uh, as, I, as I said before, when we did the podcast, it was three years ago, nobody was doing podcasts in Cambodia. Uh, now there are a few big podcasters uh, on, on iTunes. Nobody was doing podcasts. Nobody really understood what we were doing. It was too long. Uh, and what we did was just following our guts. I have to be honest on that, that part. And it was also a bit more about understanding our audience, uh, giving them a chance to have a conversation with us and with other 
uh, with other users. We tried lots of different things. You know, we we tried to publish the podcast on different channels. We tried to publish this like snippet, like short extract of podcasts on Facebook. Massive fail. Didn't work at all. I love these. All my podcasts. This is how I get to know when a new podcast comes up. You know, a small teaser. Massive fail. Um, so. Yeah, I have to say now we are sponsoring a, a new project that is uh, doing podcast and uh, we are really planning to uh, have people involved with us to to train them and help them think about audience engagement because it's, I mean, there are two things, you know, either you really want to push your product or maybe your audience doesn't want your product. And if they don't want your product, you're going to have to wait. That's, that's the game. Um, I didn't listen to podcasts when I was 20. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear you. You know, we were we were playing around with this thing called headline earlier, which does this little, you know, put a snippet out on, you know, we're clueless. We we love podcasts. We have no idea how to promote them. Uh, listen, I just wanted to uh, say to the uh, our, our, uh, people who have just joined um, joined us for the beers, for the drinks, for the coffees, for the teas, or whatever it is you drink uh, at this time in your part of the world. We're still sticking around. We're going to be here a whole hour more. Um, there's no agenda. We're just chatting. Feel free to uh, jump in. We're just wrapping um, Alex Fishot up with, uh, from Wapatoa, which is this uh, enormously dynamic media startup that uh, that has wonderful conversations with young people. So just stick around if that's what you joined us for. Um, Alex, I hope I hope you you have time to hang up. No pressure. But listen, one last question, if I may. Um, this is the beta community. This is the splice community. Um, what, how can we help you? If there was a way that we could help, you have this incredible talent and compassion from around the world present right now, right here, uh, and more on YouTube uh, when this goes um, on uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Ask us, how can we help? Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, She's prepared. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, there is this. I don't know. Maybe this is rude, but it's it's five p.m. now, right? There's this Over. famous uh, there's this famous uh, British French YouTuber, and he always started with video by, by uh, "I'm glad you fucking asked," and that's that's how it, it feels now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think what we what we need help or support with are um, um, two things. So, which I think you guys know very well. The first one is. Lots of people we want to collaborate with on the content side, uh, content creation, is that they don't really understand the, that you have to think about your user first. They want to make a story about something, and then they hope people are going to read it and that someone is going to pay for it. It's really, really hard. Uh, we are in this workshop with you know journalists, younger, older, and it's when we, we arrive with our way of thinking, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult and trying to evangelize, but we are just who we are, you know? Uh, and also we have work to do, so it's hard. Uh, so I think having, uh, like I think it's what you did with the Google uh, initiative, or I forgot the Google News initiative. Having that in Cambodia, knowing that you would be maybe starting from really, like it would be hard, <laughs> I would say. But I think that would be super helpful to think about audience, designing product, and then at the end of the spectrum, how do you measure that your product is useful, has impact, that people will care about it, that maybe people would pay for it. So this whole impact measurement part. But then in our context, um, because for some reason now, uh, it's there are a lot of grants available to us because people want to work with young people. You're young, you're a woman, like you, you, you have it. People want to work with you. So we are kind of benefiting of, of this right now. But then we really want to push to the next level the way we measure our impact. Uh, we don't want to talk about our shares, our likes, and our followers anymore. So we are working more on conversation-based reporting, uh, just no more report or still reports, but just another way of doing reports. I think that would be super helpful and involve the young people who are in the media collective with us. Um, yeah, I think I think that's where we need the most uh, yeah the most help, uh, like product product design, audience engagement, and uh, impact measurement. Wonderful. I hope you're listening, people. We've got to we've got to get that in a little, little list. Oh, I forgot uh, one at some point. Go for it. Yeah. 
Um, Wish list time. <laughs> yeah, it's Christmas. Uh, no, the other one is that, so we are growing this network, you know, and even though we've never been super, we've never been organized like as a pyramid at Vapatoa, it's just, it's more and more people coming in. So we have this process, the, the flow for content, uh, but then we have to create all of these processes for publication, validation, payment, this whole decentralized organization. Uh, how do we consolidate our, our data, our impact measurement? It was okay when it was just us. Now with the pilot of the Media Collective, it's we have five other youth groups, influencers. We'd like to get 10 or 20 in, you know, but the, the logistic of that, it's, it's a bit of a headache, to be honest. And I'm sure there are um, like best practices, um, technology platform solutions we can, we can use. Uh, and if people could give us direction on, on that, and you don't have to come to Cambodia if you don't want to, but also you can come at some point. Um, or explain us online. Yeah, that would be cool. That is wonderful. Okay, with that, we're going to formally wrap up this uh, uh, segment of of, um, of our time. Um, thank you, Alex. This is really awesome to see uh, the, the, the changes that, that you've made um, and the ideas that you've, you've, you've made happen since then. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, now we're just going to quickly take a break. Uh, we'll come back with with some drinks in our hands. Yeah, I think we've got some beers in the fridge. We've got some and beers. We might have a happy birthday song to sing for somebody. That's uh, right. To find out, uh, you might already know who it is. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording right now. And uh, everybody, go get a drink. Get a and, drink. And uh, come. come back in about two minutes. <laughs> 